Got it. Okay. Unmute your speaker. Okay. Synchronize your watches. <laughs> Belt. 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 Okay. It's so nice having IT in the room. Good morning. Today is uh, Friday, November 18th. I am Mavis Bates, and we are the Energy and Environmental Committee for Kane County Board, and it is nine o'clock, so let's get started. Um, Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alan? Caius? Caius, present. Molina? Strathman? Strathman here. Wallace? Wonicki? Present. Bates? Present. Pirog? And Shepro? We have quorum. Thank you very much. Um, may I have um, a motion to approve the minutes of October 14th? Wonicki nice. moves. Wonicki second. seconds. First, second. <laughs> Don't matter. One or the other. Did you get that? Uh, okay, thank you. Aye. Is there any discussion of the minutes? There is a discussion. Okay, yes. Mr. I, as I pointed out to our recording secretary there, there was a computer glitch of some sort, or I just like the uh, resolution number three so much, approving contract with the Illinois State Water Survey that I get to vote twice. <laughs> so it's listed that I got two eyes in that, but I think uh, that might be, a, it's a Scribner's error, but I couldn't pass up. Okay. If that could be modified, I would. You, you're just so important that we like to give you vote early, so vote a, often. You know what? I get to vote twice on everything. That's, I like <laughs> okay. that trend. From now on, you're on in. Uh, thank you. Is there any public comment? Not in person. Anybody online? No. Uh, okay, Ms. Woldnick. I think we have to. Do we vote on that? On, on what? Yes. No, we can. Approval of we minutes? Vote on oh, the, on the uh, minutes. Approval on the, of the minutes. The minutes, yeah. Oh, please. Okay. You gotta keep me honest here. Alan? Caius? Caius, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Wallace? Wonicki? Yes. Bates? Bates, yes. Approved. Okay, now I would like to turn the meeting over to Ms. Wolnick. Thank you. Good morning. I don't have a formal report this morning. We continue to work with the state's attorney's office on the four yeah. contracts for the water supply and water quality with Illinois State Water Survey and Illinois Indiana Sea Grant. And so we're hoping that in the next uh, few weeks that we'll have those finalized and can uh, kick off all of those projects. Thank you, Ms. Wolnick. That was short and sweet. <laughs> but those are very important studies and I'm very excited about them too. When, uh, when I try to explain to my constituents in District 4 of inside of the city of Aurora, what does Kane County do? When I say we're protecting our water for future generations, um, I think that's pretty important. And they all like to drink. They all get thirsty. Okay, um, uh, Ms. Let, Ryan, please. Uh, let me ask Jody a question. Sure, Madam certainly. Chair. So the water study, does it spreads throughout Kane County, even into the municipalities as well? Correct. The water study is actually, it's a regional water study. So it's a six county area um, and they drill down into more detail. And so as part of the study, they'll be doing that drilling down specifically into the Kane County area and our shallow aquifers um, and doing more detailed analysis so we can have a better idea going forward um, what kind of capacity that we have. And the concern being that as we lose capacity in those deeper aquifers that some of the municipalities might start turning to the shallower aquifers and those are more subject to contamination from like chlorides from road salt. And so we wanna project over time 
um, what that contamination might look like and if that is a viable long-term source for our residents. And I would, as you as you bring that up, um, also I would mention at, we passed that um, additional requirement on the Campton Township wells. Um, the health department is sending out those requirements to all the uh, certified well drillers in the county um, to make sure that they're aware of those new requirements for any new wells drilled in Campton Township. Oh, that, that's awesome. Um, I know I've brought this up before, but we have uh, rapid growth over in the northwest part of Kane County and with the new warehouses going in and all. So I don't know if they're if that if they're focused on that area as well, because I think that's really important. A lot of uh, large subdivisions going in. And of course, they're all they're all tapping into the deep aquifer. Yep. OK. Thank you. That is very important work. Um, as is recycling. So Ms. Ryan, yeah. please. Sure. Um, so uh, just a quick update on some of our events this fall. Um, we held our pumpkin smash at Pushing the Envelope Farm on November 5th. Um, the, the weather that day was not great. It was very, very windy, pretty cold, and then it poured rain a uh, half hour before our event ended. So it, it could sound like a disaster, but it actually was really fun because um, the best parts of that event, in my opinion, are the, the family that owns the farm that we um, that we that host the event. They're really interesting and lovely people. Um, I didn't know this uh, until planning this event, but they own the envelope facility, uh, production facility right next door to where the farmland is. And that's why the name pushing the envelope. So that was Very pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other really great thing uh, that uh, that event has traditionally been, I, at least for the last few years, volunteer staffed by uh, foreign exchange students. Um, and it was again this year. And although they were cold, they, you know, they were in good spirits. Um, we had someone juggling pumpkins, someone. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it was great. Um, we did, and we did serve about 150 vehicles um, and collected hundreds of pumpkins. Um, it was down from past years almost by half. Um, we're attributing it mostly to the weather, but um, the farm was still grateful to have that compost. I, what they do with the pumpkins, um, they actually shred them, which I didn't know. Um, like a, a whole pumpkin is pretty big to compost. You would need a really hot compost heap. Um, so shredding it uh, makes it much more likely to compost properly. And then they apply it um, to the fields. They grow a lot of raspberries and blackberries there, uh, fruit trees. And then they have community vegetable plots so people can grow whatever they want. Yay. Um, and then this, since the election, uh, we've been doing campaign sign recycling. Um, pretty much any citizen campaign candidate, et cetera, has been able to drop off their campaign signs at either West Dundee or Fabian uh, since the election. Um, it kind of started a little slow, but I, I visited Fabian earlier in the week and they have probably two or three square or yeah, cubic yards of signs there that I got to go get today. Um, West Dundee, uh, a little bit fewer, but they've had a lot, a lot as well. Some really big signs. Um, and we have a roll off at the far end of the driveway here where we're actually collecting all those um, and they can be recycled they're made of polypropylene or recyclable plastic it's just they can't go through a mer so that's why we're doing it, um, I borrowed the idea from DuPage and Lake County is jealous I heard yesterday. So. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's my event update. Um, now I'll talk about these resolutions. Um, I have three resolutions before you today. Uh, the first two are kind of related to each other and are also perennial. Um, they're basically for our ongoing program. The first is authorizing a memorandum of understanding with Reverse Logistics Group of Americas and eWorks Electronic Services Incorporated for electronics recycling. Uh, as part of the Consumer Electronics Recycling Act program for year 2023. That's a mouthful. Um, <clears throat> so Reverse Logistics Group is one of the uh, organizations, corporations that works with the electronics clearinghouse for the state in the state law 
and they in turn kind of work with eWorks. And we are assigned um, a recycler as a participant in the uh, state program. And uh, we request to be continually assigned to reverse logistics group and eWorks because you know, don't, don't, was it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> um, and that has happened again for 2023. Um, so this, uh, res the resolution would approve an agreement just to solidify that relationship. Okay. Um, may I have a motion and a second and any discussion to pass this resolution? Just the first one, eh? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, so moved, Caius. Bates moves. I'll say Strathman seconds. Strathman seconds. Uh, any discussion? Any further discussion or questions? Okay, clerk, please call the roll. Bless you. Alan? Bates? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Wallace? Wonicky? Yes. Passes. Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Ryan. Okay, yep. Uh, the second resolution is to authorize an intergovernmental agreement with the village of West Dundee and eWorks again uh, for operation of the West Dundee Recycling Center in 2023. Um, yeah, this is essentially the agreement uh, with, with the village that lets um, the eWorks use the the space uh, where the recycling center is behind the village uh, Department of Public Works building uh, on behalf of the county. Um, this is a budget item. Um, we pay currently pay uh, West MD and the, this uh, this agreement will continue um, the exchange of nine thousand dollars a year um, for the use of that space. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion and a second to a bias move. Gaius moves. Monique seconds. Monique seconds. And discussion? Just on discussion. It's very convenient to have it up there. We're really happy to have it in the north part of the county. And they, they were really good about taking my signs too. They dropped quite a few off. Excellent. Probably the big ones you were talking about. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Big <laughs> oh, big ones. <laughs> I didn't have any big ones. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Alan? Caius? Guys, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Wallace? Wonicky? Yes. Bates? Bates, yes. Passes. Thank you very much. Um, I want to mention again how important this sign recycling is because that's a big volume of stuff. And I have seen signs go into the garbage, my garbage, sometimes when there was no alternative. So um, it's not good for your karma <laughs> right? <laughs> to, put yeah. those, to put those signs in the garbage. So I'm good for karma. Madam Chair. Yes, please go ahead. I Show have a trailer Strathman. of signs in my yard. This is Strathman. I have a trailer of signs in my driveway, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity to recycle them. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Does, does it include the wires? Yes. Uh, you take yeah. the wires off. Okay. You yeah, but you bring them for recycling. You can bring them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I imagine, you know, given the popularity, uh, we would do this for every election. Mm -hmm. I think it's an yeah. excellent, excellent idea. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I sneaked in a few old Greenfest signs as well. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> if it happened in the county, I'm cool with it. <laughs> Mr. Caius. Did any, camp in, any campaign, so. Uh -huh. well, that's true words. confessions from Band of Chair. <laughs> in, in one meeting, I think I'll slow down on those. Good morning, Miss Allen. Welcome. Oh, Deborah. Um, uh, Miss Ryan. Okay, and then the final resolution before you is uh, authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with Blackberry Township um, that is also a rider to the offer to contract uh, with Clean Harbors Environmental Services for household hazardous waste curbside collection service. Um, what this does is essentially extends the geographic scope of the current curbside collection of household hazardous waste to all unincorporated addresses in Blackberry Township. Um, as of right now, 
uh, Mill Creek addresses are eligible for the program, but outside of Mill Creek unincorporated addresses are not. Um, however, as part of them joining um, the franchise hauler agreement with LRS, LRS is now on the hook to provide $3 per year per household in all of unincorporated Blackberry Township for household hazardous waste. And they pay that to the county and we in turn pay clean harbors to go pick up that waste upon request. Um, so it is it's sort of a budget item is both an income item and an expense item. Um, but so far we haven't had any problems keeping um, the HHW collection program in the black. Thank you. Um, there's a little uh, typo here. In, in the, it looks like ride to the office, <laughs> but it's rider to the offer. Oh, look to the offer. Rider to the. I'll offer. see if we can fix that. Okay. We don't. Thank know. you. Okay, Matt. Do, do I have a motion on this one already? Uh, motion. Miss Allen moves. Uh, second. Miss um, um, Molina, would you like to second? Sure, I'll second. Okay, give somebody else a chance. Um, okay, Kirk, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Caius? Caius, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Wallace? Wonicki? Yes. Bates? Bates, yes. Passes. Okay, thank you. And do you have anything else, Ms. Ryan? Okay, let's turn it over to Ms. Klee. Good morning, Madam Chair and committee members. This morning, I have a resolution for you all today for your review. Um, it is approving the fiscal year 23 operations and maintenance agreement with U.S. Geological Survey for the stream and rainfall gauges. There are five stream gauges and four rainfall gauges throughout Kane County. Um, this is an annual program um, and it is a joint funding operation as well. The USGS does provide um, a, a portion of the funds, but the county does um, also provide the majority of it. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. May I have a motion to uh... Caius moves. Caius moves. Um, Strathman. Strathman seconds. Okay. Uh, discussion. The uh, oh, Caius. Yeah. Uh, these. This is like the gauge at um, Algonquin uh, Dam up there. That's doing this. The USGS. Yes, right. That's one of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Miss Allen. My my question, Allen here. Um, mm -hmm. We have. We have several programs. Mike, please. Mike, please. Mike, please. Mike, please. Stem. Okay, sit down. Yeah. We have several programs that are working together, I believe. We're doing the, the groundwater study. Mm -hmm. We're doing the well study. Um, th these are all things that will come together to give us a pretty good picture of water in the county, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, I have a comment on this and that is that when i go kayaking i pull up the usgs uh app on my phone and i check to see what the cubic feet flow is per second i guess uh on on the river uh the one i use is on, on in montgomery and if it's over 2100 uh i know when they have the kayak and canoe race if it's over 2100 feet per cubic second, cubic feet per second, they cancel the race. Mm -hmm. They told me, since I'm a grown up, I can go up, to, my buddies said, you could maybe go up to 2,500 if you want. But that's a safety feature for me when I'm going kayaking, I know when not to go. And so thank you <laughs> for keeping that going. And Ms. Molnick, did you wanna say anything? I would say also um, it's critical for the modeling of the floodplain along the river. That's the data that's used by a lot of our engineers um, to make sure that we're, it, it, when we, we're seeing these higher flow rate events um, that we're seeing more recently, um, that we're accurately depicting that and making sure that any structures along the river are safe. And in the same manner, 
um, the folks that live along the river do check those gauges um, to see if there's a potential, how, how high the river is getting, what it's predicted to be, um, if they might need to evacuate or move their vehicles or anything like that. So it's critical in, in many different areas. And it's we have a huge history with these gauges um, that gives us that it, historical data. Um, so continuing the operation of the, the gauges is really important to our future projections of what type of flooding we might it might occur in Kane County. Wow. So I need it for recreation and some people need it for safety and survival. So thank you. Uh, may I have a vote roll call? Any more comments, questions? Is, is, that, is that funded by uh, the riverboat? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Mr. Kais, for funding our yes. <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead, please. Alan? Alan, aye. Kaius? Kaius, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Wallace? Wonicki? Yes. Bates? Yes. Passes. Thank you very much. Presentation, sustainability updates. Yes, so I also have a sustainability update presentation for you all this morning. Uh, hang on one second. Thank you. Not working. Just give me a minute. Just need a minute for it to change over. I need. It. Oh, there we go. I might do the rescue. <laughs> Um, first, I'll give some updates on the solar project. Um, so some action items and site activities that have been going on um, over the last month. There are foundation posts in the ground. So you can see in the photo, there are foundation posts stacked up on the field. Um, that photo is facing north. You can see the judicial center in the background. Um, there's been communication with the neighbors on any kind of noise that they're going to be hearing um, in any particular week. Um, the construction noise for the foundation post has been a bit loud, so um, we're making sure to stay in touch with them and let them know how long that's going to go on for. Um, there's also been electrical work and directional boring happening on site. There are uh, erosion blankets that have been put down um, over some of the groundwork, and they're still working on putting all of those down. Um, the fence stakes have been placed. Um, so Jody and I went out and walked um, those stakes to see in the areas where um, we could see the neighboring homes to ensure that in areas where the neighbors can see the fence, that those areas will be upgraded to aluminum uh, black fencing instead of chain link fencing. Um, and racking and seating is up next. Um, so I know that there has been interest in a tour of the facility and the grounds. Um, and I asked when the, the panels are potentially gonna be put in and they think sometime early next year, maybe at the end of this year. Um, so I will uh, keep you all updated on that. It'd be fun to be there when they put up the first. Mm -hmm. if maybe I'll, if we could do that. Okay, yes, I will. A, a once, they, once they have a good idea of when that's gonna happen, I, okay. I'll reach out to everyone. <laughs> Adam, okay. sure question. Sure, go ahead, Ms. Jethro. Oh. Can you uh, tell me, Ivy, what the erosion blankets are like? What are what is that? So I actually do have some photos. So you, so this in this photo, you can see the erosion blankets are covering um, in the area to the north of the silt fence. So they're kind of that yellowish um, ground covering. So the erosion blankets are to hold down the. Uh, the soil and make sure the soil isn't rolling around um, to ensure that there's less erosion on the site. And it's also um, for the safety and uh, best management practices of the um, stormwater requirements for the county and the site. Um, and what's the composition of that? Um, I am not a hundred percent. It's straw and it ha it's woven with a, um, a degradable uh, material. So in a few years that with the sun and the grass will grow up through it, um, that, that mesh will degrade in the sun. Oh, so it's compostable in a way. So correct. Okay. Yes. And in the seed, it, it, the seeding is integrated with that. Oh, okay. Is there Thanks. seed in there already? 
Is it our blend, our our native blend? Cool. Nice. nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So are we going to seed everything now before we put on the... Um, I believe they have done seeding already, and then they'll, they'll do another round once all of the construction has been finished. I know that's been a big challenge for them, and I appreciate their extra work on trying to make that happen because it's important. Mm -hmm. We got to keep those butterflies happy, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Our pollinators. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in this photo, you can see it's kind of like a panoramic view of the, the solar field. Um, those foundation posts are set in lines across the field. You can see the judicial center in the background, and then there's that silt fence. Uh, these next photos are uh, another panoramic view. So this is facing south. Um, you can see the neighboring homes across the street, and that's the view from what it looks like if you're standing on the, the solar field. Um, here are some more photos. You can kind of see that erosion blanket a little bit better here. Um, the photo to the left, I believe, is facing directly south. The photo in the middle is the south uh, east, And then the photo on the right is facing um, I believe to the west of, like of the west. project site. Yes. This is looking very neat and tidy mm -hmm. as yeah. it progresses. It's yes. going from a mud hole <laughs> to, <laughs> yes. to a landscape. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um, so these are some photos of the South Berm. Definitely looking a lot neater um, than it has in a couple months past. Um, you can see one of the new planted trees up close. Um, those are one of the evergreens. And in the photo on the right, it's kind of just a, a, a view further back um, of what the South Berm looks like. And here are some photos of the landscaping project and the trees. Um, this is from taken from the sidewalk. Um, that is right by the neighboring homes on the south side of Bridger Road. Um, they're looking really nice. They're growing very quickly. Um, all the trees have been looking good. Here's some that more photos. Great. Mm -hmm. Here's yeah, some more photos of gorgeous. the trees. Yes, they they they're looking great, and I think that they're definitely growing. The tall trees were already there, right? Yes, Just old trees. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here are some more trees. So this is, we started with view a view from the west side and now we're moving further east. Mm -hmm. And here are some of the trees up close. So the photo on the left, um, those evergreens were provided by the landscaping company um, that the county worked with to plant those trees. And in the photo on the right, you can see some kind of smaller evergreen trees. Those were provided by the Chicago Region Trees Initiative. Um, so we were, we, it's kind of nice to have the mix of both. The site looks really nice. I think we're being like good Girl Scouts and leaving a place better than when we got there. Mm -hmm. Hey, not, not a bit of teasel to be seen. No, that teasel let's, was. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark Davos and I went up there a year ago to look at it. And I, I have, in, in like February and March, the teasel was only, you know, mm -hmm. a foot tall. But we went in June and the teasel was above our heads. And I had on some thin hiking pants and he had on shorts. And he was being the gentleman and protecting me <laughs> from the diesel, like stepping it down. And by the time we got back to the parking lot, he was bloody, <laughs> bloody from the. So thank you, Mark, <laughs> Davis, for that, for protecting me. But yeah, this looks very nice. Thank you, Ivy, mm -hmm. for, that, for all this great work. Are there any questions before I move on to the next item? So the next, the first, uh, do we have a date when we might flip the switch? Um, or something? I don't think I'm still working on the date that or finalizing a date or an idea of the week where they're going to put start putting the panels on. OK, um, there have been a bit of, a little bit of delays um, just with the foundation posts. There was a little 
um, delay in the process. So it's taking a little bit longer than expected, but once they have a date for... How much will they work through the winter? They work through the winter. <laughs> The cold does not stop them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I'm already miserable. But I didn't have my hat on. So okay. Okay, great. Go ahead, Ivy. Okay. And I have an update on the climate action implementation plan. Um, so the kickoff meeting with Pale Blue Dot has um, commence. So we have met with them uh, two times and we're meeting with them again today just to continue the work on this project. Um, so far, everything's gone really wonderfully. Um, we are currently in the stage of existing documentation and data collection. So we are working with them to provide all of the existing documentation, King County plans, um, and any regional data and numbers that they need in order to do um, the analysis for that portion of the plan. Um, and right now what we're really gearing up for is the stakeholder engagement and public outreach piece of the plan. So we've been communicating with Kane County staff, um, doing a lot of public outreach to key stakeholders in the community, as well as Kane County municipalities um, and members of the public. So I will be in communication with you all once um, we have communication materials to be sent out directly um, and I can forward, I'll be working with um, the public information officer, Julie, and also Brenda um, to send out all of those, all that information. Um, but if you know of anyone in the county who's interested in participating in um, public engagement, uh, please let me know, feel free to send me contact information. Um, and then on the right hand side, you can see uh, Pale Blue Dot drafted up this flyer for us. Um, so we're planning to put out a lot of flyers in the community and local places just to let community members know that this is a plan that the county is working on and if they would like to get involved, how they can do that. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments on the flyer, I would be happy to hear those. Um, Maybe we don't need the mountains. The mountains. Okay. <laughs> you like the mountains? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I did just want to provide a preliminary project schedule so that we can kind of look at this um, from an overall perspective. Um, so on the left hand side, you can see the, the project task and then the timeline. So we've completed project kickoff and we've started working together. Um, we are still in the midst of the existing conditions and documentation and assessment piece of the plan. Uh, community engagement will is we're kind of doing the back end of that work right now, and then that will commence early next year um, in January and probably through March. Um, team engagement will continue from February through August of next year. There will be a draft. Um, created it through, it through the summer, July through August, um, and then a review of that draft with the community um, from September to October of next year, and implementation support tool, tools developed um, also in September and October of next year, and then the hope is to finalize the plan next November. So that is the tentative project schedule. I will keep you all updated on progress and if that schedule plans to change. Thank you, Ivy. Any comments, Mr. Caius? How much are you working with the Forest Preserve on that? Or we will be working with the Forest Integrated. Preserve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we we had the uh, ribbon cut, we had a ribbon cutting at the Forest Preserve mm -hmm. and um, the uh, IDNR guy Sorry, I don't have his name. On. John. Regner. John Rodner. Rodner. John Rodner was there, and he was very excited about the climate action plan. Awesome. So, I'm glad uh, to hear that. So, you know, that was just one more suggestion of okay. IDNR wants to have a land uh, plan, uh, 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 open spaces part of the climate action plan for mm -hmm. carbon sequestration. So this is awesome. going to be very exciting and include all of the departments of King County mm -hmm. and um, we're you know we, we want their engagement and we want to make a we want this to help stop climate change so we're doing our bit doing our part Ms. Wonicki yeah 
thank you, Madam Chair. We need to get the word out to all the municipalities as well, and uh, so that they continue to give us some of their open spaces instead of uh, big, big uh, Amazon buildings and and highways. And so that's just my thought. Maybe we could start putting green roofs on top of all the warehouses. Solar and solar. And Solar, solar and green roofs. Let's start putting these monster warehouses to uh, good use. Ivy, <laughs> you're not in your spare time. Especially if the one along Benny goes in, that, that's a good idea. And I think about that. Let's turn all of those into. In, there, I think there's, I heard the other night that the, the uh, one of the two Amazon out in Huntley is not even going to open. Hasn't opened yet. Oh, what was hmm? that? Yeah, one of them did pull out. Yeah, out. they built. What it. happened? They built it and pulled out. Amazon's not going to come in. One of those. <laughs> there were two huge buildings up there, and right. one of them, I believe, is built and has nobody in it. Yeah. What I see happening is they're building these on spec, right? They're just built. They build these. What are they? Ten acres. 20 acre warehouses huge huge and then and then a four four lease sign goes up so they're let's put some solar panels on there at least yeah okay we get working on that solar panels on the the hope would also be to engage corporate partners within the county as well to receive support um, from those who are interested and want to engage so that not only we can engage residents and uh, municipalities, but also have partnerships with um, entities who are in the private sector within the county. Mm -hmm. but Somehow. Microphone, please. Oh, sorry. There's some. Um, Lewis. Ms. Lewis here. Um, it would be like when these projects first start, if we could get the information to them at the very beginning, and I don't know where all these development plans start, you know, get information like, hey, you should think about solar. Um, I happened to be at some training at the Oswego Police Department the last three days. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I was just walking in and I looked up and they got this big like square tower at the top of the building and it's all solar panels. And I was like, whoa, solar panels at Oswego, you know, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, and they did it when they built the building, they build it consciously thinking about what can we do. And, it, and that's the time to do it is when you start, first start planning those buildings and plan it right in and it becomes your cost savings up front. So if we could somehow get to those people in the beginning, um, Mark Van per Kirkhoff probably knows all that. Okay. <laughs> He's like the smartest person in the world when it comes to development. Okay. Ms. Chairman, another question. Yes, go ahead, please. Um, and we're engaging with like Friends of the Fox and other groups like that with this information? Yes, yes. Okay. Our hope is to definitely engage with all of the entities that are currently within um, King County's network. And then also I've been doing a lot of outreach um, with those contacts that we do currently have to engage um, with nonprofits um, and other community organizations that we don't currently have contacts in um, so that we can be really reaching out to voices that we haven't heard before um, so that we're including um, lots of different perspectives. And the community colleges in our, in the county? Are we mm -hmm. reaching out to them as well? Great, yes. great. Thank okay. you. Yes, if there are any suggestions or if um, any committee members have contacts of um, academia, um, any private sector, large companies, um, business associations, or just anyone who they, like a resident who's very engaged, um, we do want the, the stakeholders who are going to be involved in the public engagement to be engaged um, and there will be listening sessions held for those participants um, to come and share their feedback. So we want engaged people, um, but we also do want to reach out and get the message to everyone so that everyone has a chance to see what's going on and decide if they want to be involved. VIA if, on your list? VIA. VIA. I'll add that. Yeah, I got that. I got that contact. Valley Industrial. 
Pardon me? I said, I have that contact for her. Yeah. And should we send any contact to you, Avi? Yes, please. So okay. what we're planning to do uh, very soon is we're working with Pale Blue Dot to send out um, two different types of surveys. So one survey will collect data on kind of like an overall perspective and on sustainability from sustainability within King County and collect data on viewpoints about transportation, climate change, um, the waste sector, kind of like behavior type data points. Um, and that will just provide us with feedback on how the average King County resident uh, views climate change. Um, and that data will be used within um, the plan and analyzed. And then another survey will be sent out um, as a, and it will, both of them will be connected so that if anyone is interested in participating, they can let us know um, why they're interested, if they have any kind of experience. Um, so both of those will be sent out in a, a large communications push. So I'll get all of that information to you all when that goes out so you can share with your networks as well. Yeah, great, Robert. Ms. Ms. Wolnick. Thank you, just to comment. Um, oh, Nikki. <laughs> I, I read the dailies every day online and um, the city of St. Charles is kind of debating what they wanna do with the old police station, which is located right on the Fox River on the north side of Route 64. So it might be good to reach out to them and, and maybe think about sustainability when they think about what they want to do there. Um, Cause I think they're talking about large apartment buildings or uh, I think one of them, one of the suggestions was a hotel or something, but it'd be nice if they would uh, kind of consider the sustainability uh, method of building along the Fox river. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Do we have a green building portion for this climate action plan? Well, so the county has adopted a green building policy um, and right. the plan will encompass a ton of different sectors within sustainability and climate change, um, but building optimization, energy efficiency, clean energy policy, mm -hmm. renewable energy will definitely be emphasized um, because again, like, last um, e, e committee meeting when I shared the CMAP um, greenhouse gas inventory data, a large portion of greenhouse gas emissions does come from buildings, mm -hmm. which is considered stationary energy. Um, so that, so buildings are a, a large a piece of that puzzle that we, that we need to understand more. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is important work. Thank you, Ivy. Yes. Like I say to all my staff, we are doing important work. Okay, any more questions for Ms. Klee? All right, thank you very much. Um, we've come to new business. Is there any new business from the committee? Is there, so chairs, comments? Um, I would like to thank Ms. Monicki for your service to the environmental cause in King County. And we will miss you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I will miss everybody as well. Very much so. And um, well, we'll see you next month. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to adjourn? A report's Sorry. on file. Oh, may I have a motion to, a motion or consensus? I would ask for a consensus yeah. uh, to place the reports on file, please. Yes, okay. Um, there's no executive session needed. Now, right? May I have a motion to adjourn? Caius moves. So moved. Or actually, you should move. Cheryl, uh, Ms. Strathman. Caius moves. Cheryl, uh, um, Ms. Strathman seconds. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you, everybody. It's the first time you guys ever have been done before. <laughs> I know. Strong. Good meeting.